Welcome to Monochemistry. <clears throat> this evening we're going to look at percent composition. Percent composition is defined as the percent by mass that particular parts of a compound make up. When we say parts, those parts can mean individual elements or in some cases they can also mean polyatomic ions. For all of the questions that we will do, unless otherwise stated, you will be asked to determine the percent by mass of individual elements. This is an important and actually quite simple uh, calculation to do in chemistry. Here's a real life example of why or how percent composition is used. On the back of any food label, you will find the nutrition facts. And in the nutrition facts, it will be broken down into four categories. You'll have your fat, you'll have your carbohydrates, your proteins, and usually they have sodium as well. And these are usually based on a a 2,000 calorie diet. So whatever you're eating, what they do is they take the mass of that and they figure out what percentage of that it is. So it's, it's a percent composition. How much of that particular food is made up of fat? And how does that compare to your daily value, uh, that your, your daily recommended value that you should be eating? So if, for instance, in this particular picture, you've got your total fat for the whole thing is 3.5, so that's how much fat's in it. But compared to what you should have in your diet, that's only 5%. So if you ate one of these, you one of these crackers, I guess they're crackers, you'll get 3.5 grams of fat, but that would only be 5% of your daily recommended intake if you're eating a 2,000 calorie diet per day. Okay, so that's a practical application of this, and again, basic chemistry composition. It's, it's not a hard, it's not really a hard calculation. I'm going to show you right here. We'll do a sample problem. Simple question, a simple question that you might get would be, find the percent composition of sodium chloride. Okay, so here is how you would set up the problem. The percent composition of sodium is equal to the mass of sodium, that's mass of sodium, divided by the molar mass of sodium chloride. And then, of course, to get a percentage, we always multiply by 100. OK, so what is the mass of sodium? I don't know, Mr. Monaghan. I don't know what the mass of sodium is. Well, if we're comparing it to the molar mass, the mass of sodium is quite simply the mass that you would find on the periodic table. Now, if it, if it wasn't the molar mass that we were using here, if, say, you were given a question and it gave you the mass of a substance, the mass of a substance is uh, so much is made up of sodium, but then you wouldn't use that. But if it doesn't give you any information, if this is all it gives you, you're going to use the molar mass and the mass that you'd find for sodium on the periodic table. So let's figure this out. The percent composition of sodium and sodium chloride is equal to 22.99 divided by the total mass, which is 58.44. And again, you don't really need to include units. There will be no units in percent composition. Grams divided by grams or grams per mole divided by grams per mole will cancel out. And then multiply that by 100. So the final answer for sodium is going to equal, and the final answer for that is 39.3%. Okay, so that only does one of the elements. The other element, chlorine, well, there's two ways I could do that. I could do it the same way. I could set it up so that I found the mass of chlorine divided by the total. So it would be 35.4%. 45 divided by 58.44 or another way I could do it 
would simply be to assume that I would only ever have 100% of this, which is true. And so the percent composition of chlorine would have to be 100 minus my 39.33. One, oops, 100 minus 39.3. Now, if I'm not completely off my rocker, that would be 60.7%. Okay, so the percent comp of the CL in this case is 60.7%. And that in a nutshell is how you do a basic percent composition problem. Now, there is another type of problem where it specifically gives you the mass of a substance and tells you what the mass of the individual elements are. You solve them basically the same way, except in those questions you don't need to find the molar mass because the numbers that you need are already given in the question. Okay, so try the couple that you have for homework, see what you can do. And if you have any questions, make sure you write them down and we'll talk about them in class.